John and Roxanne at the Venus Project, and thank you guys for coming on the seminar. Uh, we have some questions from the community and some general things to talk about, if you guys are fine with that. Sure. Yeah. All right. How are you guys doing overall? How's Very everything good. going on here? Busy, as usual. <laughs> yeah. And uh, do you want to talk about Jock's health at all? If all how, how are you holding up? How are you feeling, Jock? You want to know? You're all right. About to, you're about to be 98 years old. This is true. Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to get into the questions. Um, first one we have is specific to values. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, some people are asking about, is there a cohesive list with definitions of values that we should all be working towards? Um, I looked for it. You know, it's not very specifically defined. It is contained in all areas of the Venus Project, whether it be the books, the website, and the videos. Um, but do you have a specific list that you, that you would uh, recommend? Well, I would say that people would be oriented by TV programs that they watch, and that gives them the general orientation. You're talking about a list of values today for people to aspire to. I think that's the question. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Yeah. I cannot do that. Okay. I can only show them a video. And if that, remember that the people in the films of the future will be children that are trained in this new way of thinking and young people. The older people, you don't need them all trained in this viewpoint because I think less than 1% of the population runs America. So you don't need to convince everybody. They can go on believing whatever they want to believe as long as they have access to the necessities of life. Health care, food, clothing, shelter. All right. Well, you know, the values that people have are dictated by the culture they grow up in to support that culture. Today, it's competitive, competitive being competitive, rugged individual, mm -hmm. you know, you step over people to get what you want, to accumulate money. Step on them. That's right, you step on them. <laughs> step over. <laughs> but, you know, um, the values of patriotism so they can get you to go fight the wars for the resources that they need. Um, but in, in the future, the values would be quite different because they would be supporting a resource-based economy. Without the use of money, you don't have competitive. You don't have. You don't push being competitive. You being. You're cooperative. So you you have different types of understanding about how we relate to one another, how we acquire uh, the way we think, how we we acquire our values, who's controlling that, and what benefit is it for. So when you understand that um, you acquire your values and the way you look at the world, or today they call it the way you think about the world, is is through the monetary system to support that system. So if you understand in the future that your, your values would be to support a resource-based economy, it would be quite different. Maybe, maybe we're using the wrong terminology then. Maybe, we're, maybe we're, values isn't the thing because values, the definition of it would be your reflection of your environment, yes. your reaction to your environment. So That's true. it's hard to, you can't just say you, you should have these it, values. That, those values come to you from your environment. It's like the seven word, word the seven rules of wisdom. There is no such thing. Mm, mm. It's, <laughs> you know, that will be good, that will be just, you don't cover your, your husband, I mean, your neighbor's wife or something. Okay. You know, you, you don't have those types of rules superimposed upon you. Okay. And those that are oriented to the new city and the new values. In other words, we're not making motion pictures of the average person. We're making motion pictures of people oriented to the new society. I got you. And Otherwise, the they're not going to know what it is that's different. They will see the difference immediately. Sometimes we do have opportunities with our children and mm -hmm. with uh, people who are interested in learning to yes. help them to aspire towards values or learn themselves towards a value. That's true. So maybe there's a list of that we can make up. Uh, I know you guys mentioned, you know, understanding that the Earth's resources should be the common heritage of all humans on Earth. Yes. Right? And, well, maybe not even should be. They are. They simply are. 
And yet I'm going to describe it to you. Okay. So you might understand it better. First of all, there is a language that's not subject to interpretation. That's what we must develop first. Now, the way that's done is uh, the way blueprints work. When you draw a blueprint to an object and give that blueprint to any technical organization, they'll turn out the same project, but not interpret it. They will not add to the blueprint anything. They will take that blueprint and that's their guide. So today there is a language that is not subject to interpretation. That's a blueprint. When a contractor looks at a blueprint and he, and he gives you an estimate of what it will cost to do the building, it's based on that blueprint. And he carries that out. Everything in the future will be based on the presentation of a blueprint. That's a universal language where no one can subject anything in there, their own interpretation. Now that's similar to a prescription. When a doctor writes a prescription, if you give it to any author, authentic pharmacist, he will turn out the same product, not his interpretation of what he thinks the doctor means. As long as you have that system, you have danger in the system. So the people that are oriented to the system, meaning that know how to read blueprints, will deal with problems. In other words, the average person will not deal with refrigeration, will not deal with air conditioning or bridge building. That will be done by engineers that specialize in bridge building. But the average person today has nothing to say when it comes to technology. They don't call them on the average person and say, what do you think the air conditioning volume should be? Or what do you think, how do you think it ought to operate? No, that's done by engineers that study groups of people. When you have so many people in the audience, your air conditioning is required to be set at a certain level. That's done by technicians, not the average person. Where does the average person participate? Mainly in the utilization of resources. Only. But they do not participate in the design of buildings, arrangement of cities. They do not participate unless they study that subject. So their technical competence is what gives them the right to do certain things. How well you carry out that performance is the only yardstick, technical competence. Well, if you're talking about values or value-shaped behavior... That's much later in the culture. But that's not occur right away. Certainly we are interested in people that have, have certain values already or have certain yeah. uh, methods Absolutely. of how they do things. Otherwise you can't do it. Right. You can't do it by getting opinions of different people. That's the world we're in right now. That's why people have to go to school to become a psychologist, or they have to go to school to become an engineer, mechanical, electrical engineer. They must go to an environment to pick up the procedural systems of each profession. So we don't have professions that are not disclosed in detail. We only have people that can carry out the functions of the Venus machine. We don't have that problem. They're not there because of friendship. They're there because of technical competence. That brings up something interesting. Uh, what about uh, beginning or uh, laying out some framework of procedural systems? They have to take a course in the operation of the Venus project. Mm -hmm. They must. Otherwise they cannot function. So it would be very few people that, that really run the Venus project. When I say run it, I'm talking about technical competence. In other words, even in the, the design of cities, the architect and the engineer work together. And the engineer does the structure, the architect does the design of the buildings. But there, there is no participation, unless you ask people 
How do you like living in that new city? Well, all they can say is, yes, I like it because it's air conditioned and it's comfortable. That's all they want. You don't want anything else from them. You don't want the location of lights unless they're illumination engineers. And they take care of that. So a movie studio is not run by the actors. It's run by a director, a lighting expert. He does the lighting. The sound engineer does the sound. You don't have a bunch of people there sitting around that are not trained or not educated in how the system works. So we don't have that problem. We don't have people making recommendations that are not qualified. Gotcha. So, uh, Is it a democracy? What do you mean by democracy? You mean that everybody puts their two cents in? That wouldn't work. A democratic system will not work in the production of a motion picture. A democratic system will not work in the building of a bridge. Engineers have to know what the weight of the traffic is going over, how much equipment is set aside to build that bridge. In other words, do we have the material resources? After we have the resources allocated to the building of the bridge, the bridge engineers take over from that point. Well, where does the public participate? I ask you the same question today. In the Bureau of Naval Operations, there are naval men that participate. In the Bureau, uh, or you call the Pentagon, there are people that study invasion techniques, how to block it, how to take care of problems. You don't have the average American in there. In fact, you don't have the average American any place. The average American is not trained in any specific area. But the system is run by competent people, people competent in the system, the new system. Now, unless you want to know some answers about the new system. Well, actually, that's one of them. Um, how do you see the transition economic sense? Oh, wait, one second. Uh, I see the transition going very smoothly if it's uh, run by technicians. Right. <laughs> It's highly unlikely, I imagine. We're, we're very limited on our own resources right now. Uh, you here at the Venus Project have four people. You do have many, many connections throughout the world. Uh, but You can't what, run it unless you have technicians. Yeah. How do, how do we find those technicians? How do we attract them? You don't them? find them. You make them. You make them. You educate them to the routine and procedures of the Venus Project. Well, then that would be a public person who eventually becomes educated to become a technician. Yeah. So there is value in public people going through uh, oh, this yeah, process. Going to school, learning yeah. how to become a participant. Of course. Okay. Alrighty. And so the, the the same thing comes about with just about the root cause, the root of every question, the root answer of every question is education. Yes. <laughs> that was everything we talked about. All right. Uh, this person says something very similar. How, how do you see values and cultural change inside an RBE? And how will values change and be influenced by the gradual change to an access world? Well, the younger people are trained in the operation of the Venus Project. If they choose some particular time training, they can do that. They're free to become involved in any field, taking care of the old people, uh, medical advisors, Nutritional advisors, they're all trained. But you don't have non-trained people in any position of the procedural systems. I think this one also turns into uh, changing from ownership and property into free access to things. Um, yes. And it says, please explain from the psychological point of view how that would uh, yes. be in the RBE. Even the operation of equipment, cranes, physical equipment, you have to be trained in. All right. Now we're, we're focused more on... Uh, and behavior. How, how behavior will change when you have free access to things instead of today's ownership and property and privatiz privatiz privatization of things. <laughs> well, today's ownership of property, you have to pay for the maintenance of that property. In the future, 
There'd be people that will maintain the equipment, trained to do that, educated to do that, to handle the equipment you're using. And if it isn't working right, you call upon those people, just like today. If your TV set breaks down or your refrigerator, you call upon a refrigeration engineer. You don't call upon a plumber. You call upon a plumber if there's problems in plumbing. So you have access to all the services. But, you know, growing up in this culture, there's so much stress. You can't do what you want to do most of the time. You don't have access to education. You don't have access to resources. You don't have the money either. Right, that's what I'm talking about. The experts. So, you know, in, in, in a society where you have, do have that access, there's a tremendous amount of stress lifted. People would become more educated because they have access to education. The education would be more relevant to the needs of the people. So everybody you meet, you, you like, you know they're improving your standard of living and, and your environment and, and your knowledge most of the time. So it, it would be quite different. They seem, these things seem to be inevitable anyways. Even television programs would show people how to deal with problems. They would be shown people in the old days how they dealt with the problem and how the new system works. And they show that you don't call people names, you don't beat them up, you don't get into fights, you don't get into arguments. You have a procedural system. If you disagree with somebody, you present your disagreements to a technical competent group. And they say, we don't have enough information yet. We have to study it more. Whatever they have to do. Whatever recommendations they make is valid. So they don't always have answers. They have answers in most cases, but not always. And it has to be looked into sometimes. Yeah, many times this is looked upon as having so many answers in so many areas that therefore it has all the answers in every area, and that's actually a, a big misconception. Yes. There is no claim by you that this is utopia, this is perfection, everything will be fixed. But much, or many, many more things throughout uh, global society will be uh, improved and, and in yes. many cases fixed through the... And it's always changing because it's based on mm -hmm. technology. And when people have free access to education and, and uh, equipment, these types of things, the, the remaining issues will have that much more focus on it and, uh, and, and mental power put into it that uh, it will have more. Today they have machines that measure the wear of ball bearings. And they order ball bearings well in advance of the wear. Now, machines can do that. Machines can do most things that people can't. Machines do not feel, and to give them feeling would not serve the purpose in mass production. What you want machines to do is turn out products that are very well made and long-lasting. But you don't want machines to feel good about how many products they turn out, or how many products they didn't turn out, or what they feel is wrong. We don't want to give machines feelings, just the ability to produce goods and services. We don't give them the right to vote or act upon anything they can't make decisions on. Well, that would go for people, too. The idea of being having pride in what you do, understanding that what you do comes from other people's help yes. and, and the environment that enables you to do certain things. Yes, the education that you have. If you're not able to do that, you have to relook at the environment. You don't it's, work at it. It's yeah. not, if it's not enabling people to cooperate in the, the beginning world. of the organizing of a resource-based economy you train people in the professions that are needed by a resource-based economy mm -hmm. there's no salesman there's no advertising no commercialism and you say well how can you operate without that it's a different system we're trying to install the reason we're trying to install this new system is to prevent war deprivation, starvation, hunger, antagonism, disputes, linguistic disputes, and most people are not trained in that area. So it's very hard for me to describe, depend on the situation. If you bring a 
particular situation, they can take a hallux handle. And most people don't have the ability to change things, although they think they have. You can hire a man for so much money, he's apt to repair your roof or it might, might leak, depending on his competence. So we don't have chance takers, so to speak. We don't take chances. We have technical competence. That means the ability to deal with the problems you're assigned. But it's not technical elitism. You want to talk about that? It's not technical elitism, though. You said, you said it's not technical elitism. No, it's not technical elitism. There are assigned duties. If you come into the Venus Project, they say, what is your training? Say, interior design. That means designing a house with easy access with safety devices. That's what you'd be doing. Designing a house so there's no fires, no short circuits, and the kids can't stick a screwdriver into an electrical circuit. If they did, nothing would happen. In other words, you would be into what children are apt to do without training, without sufficient training. So you try to block the occurrence from happening. You don't try to treat it after it happens. Today we make laws after a man kills somebody. We make a law, thou shalt not kill. We don't do it before. Right, or reactive yeah. instead yeah. of proactive. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Is it perfect? No, it's just a lot better than the present day system. And as time goes on, it'll become shorter, better, and improve communication. In each discipline, there's no ideal discipline that you can train a person and say, that's it forever. It isn't, it undergoes change as innovation comes in. All right, and I can move on to the next question. This one is, what are the conditions required to perform experiments in the first city uh, to prove or refute uh, whether, whether, whether the theory works or not? The first city would take students that have studied the Venus Project, that, that have been trained in how to react in relation to accomplishing a given task. And if they're trained appropriately, they do the task appropriately. If they're not, they don't even get to that position. The first city itself is actually... Uh, is to test the validity yeah. of the Venus Project's proposals. We also see it as a research center, a large research center, mm -hmm. to develop the next city right. more efficiently. Test out some more uh, uh, construction techniques, mm -hmm. more manufacturing techniques, more community well, Who to techniques. call if you don't know the answer? Mm -hmm. You know who to call. And I imagine the, I imagine the place being have a mass, massive amount of tours and showing people uh, in and out of the city and maybe even uh, staying for a period of time to take classes and be orientated in a sense. Well, when you get in a subway train today, it's operated as a machine operator, as a conductor, but they're being done away with. Machines are taking the place of the train operator, especially on airports today. There's nobody that operates the transportation system. It's automated. But before the train stops, it tells you, at station 2D, we have music, restaurants, etc. You're informed before you get out of the train or the plane. And I never see anybody protesting that. I never see people protesting stoplights no, no. or stop signs. And these are all things that existed prior to them uh, they being They can make born. recommendations. Mm -hmm. And it goes to the recommendation center. And they correspond with the person making the recommendations. They ask further questions. Right. And you want to eventually eliminate the stop signs and the stoplights and just have transportation yeah. that's efficient. And well, there's, nobody, don't operate there's nobody accusing the, uh, the local board of people that, uh, of engineers that put up in the plumbing throughout the city and the electrical system throughout the city of technological elitism. Nobody's accusing them of that. It's simply taking care of the necessities of life for humans, and even doing it on a much larger scale. And, and naturally, if a competent person is ill, he's replaced by another competent person. No, no, we don't have a problem then. 
because there's lots of technicians lined up for each job. And most people don't need to work. They can go to centers where they learn how to write, or they learn how to communicate better, or they teach communication, or take up any course that you feel, uh, not so much that you feel, that the nation feels is needed. Maybe more, not the nation, the globe. Yes. The, the world, right? Not no nations. Nation. Right. Uh, well, the global interpretation is what we use. Okay. What is needed globally. And you train in that area. And if we, if you come up with a new field, we train people in that new field right away. Because you can't rely on the others. Everybody is updated on what to expect. That would be one of the interesting values in the resource-based economy is to know that, you know, when you go through this education and when you do this work, when you do this contribution, you're contributing to the global society, yeah. which is... And you know to where to go to find the answers. Mm -hmm. You don't get into conflict with people. Okay. There's no debates. There's dialogue. You know the difference? You talk to a person, they talk back. Mm -hmm. Debate is out to win. We're not out to win. We're out to accomplish a given task with a minimum expenditure of energy and temperament. And that is the reinforcement because your standard of living goes up continuously as well. And that you know that you're participating in that. Mm -hmm. That's the reinforcement. And even with all that, you might only have to contribute a couple hours a week, if any at all, because only less than 10% of the world population, maybe even closer to 6%, would ever need, even need to work to sustain such a system. That's the estimates. I don't know exactly okay. how it'll work out. Even if machines do all the work, yeah. man is still going to do creative work. He's going to look at things, make recommendations, but there'll be people that are specialized in how to make recommendations. Gotcha. All right, I have a weird question here. Uh, maybe it's not a weird question. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask it. It's been asked before. It said, what will happen to the bodies of the deceased in a resource-based economy? I would have to leave that up to the resource-based economy. Well, one thing I, good, would, I, I think I Those could... Those people that are trained yeah. in the new social development leave their bodies to science. But they wouldn't be embalmed and put in the ground, because even today you have embalming fluid that's going in the drinking water of every city because of that, those practices. Ah. And yeah, the purpose of embalming fluid is to allow their skin and to remain so yeah. for the viewing, yeah. which is you know also another discussion yeah. altogether whether that's relevant or not. And, uh, and then, you, like you said, it's polluting the, it the underwater ground system, so it's polluting our food, polluting our drinking water, and just so we can preserve our body for a couple of days yeah. uh, for a funeral procession. All the laws will be changed so they become functional. Yeah. But you know, all those are really old rituals. Yeah. To right. look at the dead and preserve them. And they, you know, cultures from a long time ago had all those old myths about somebody I dying. wouldn't say the majority can make the switch right away. Those that uh, can't make the switch, they will be taken care of and we'll keep things as they know them mm. until they have watched enough TVs and radio shows in the future to know the difference. Taking care of in they a sense of... You can't shove people right. into the future. You can expose them to it. Those that wish to live in the new cities will. I got you. Those that can, won't. Makes sense. And then it, it'll, I think it will become obvious over time Yes. Efficiency, Over higher standard of living. Not by military means, mm -hmm. torture or imprisonment. There'll be no prisons, no police. Since people have access to the necessities of life, they do not steal. Right. Keep what works, shed what does not. Right. You know, and let the, let the, uh, the things that don't work, the inefficient things, sure. uh, fall off to the wayside over time. Right. I try to tell people when we talk about this to the public, don't, there's, no, not, there's no need to stop or prevent or remove anything. You don't have to use these, language, these words. Uh, we will just start working on relevant things and the irrelevant things will fade right. away. <laughs>
They, don't, only, they don't use the old telephone anymore. You know, the they big may be uh, 150 people in an airliner. Only two operate the airliner, the navigator and the pilot. The 150 people do not participate in the operation of that airliner. So when you say, what will people do? They sit around in an airliner and they just enjoy the view. Go along but they, for the ride. they don't have to and do it. It's not to say that they can't participate. Of they, course they can. That's it. But they, you know, you got to put in the work. Well, time. very few of them would be an airline pilot mm -hmm. that can walk in in an emergency. In an emergency, if the pilot has, say, a heart attack, the plane takes over. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we have two pilots. Until we do, until we have it automated that way, we will use redundancy. You know, they say, what will people do? Well, most people don't do today what they want to do. Exactly. They're really restricted in terms of what they can do financially. And many, of, many people don't even do. know what they would want to do. They've never given, been given an opportunity to even think about it. They've That's been true. told or directed into certain areas in their life. Even, oh, my God. That's what you say. In this culture, you don't even dare to dream because of the That's pain. Right. They say you live in quiet desperation. Even when you are interested in something when you're younger, you're shoved out of that to do something that makes a living. Right. Wow, well, yeah. Most people uh, are convinced by the new television systems of the profession they're studying. In other words, the professions that they study will be what's needed at the time. You don't become a plumber in the future, when plumbing becomes automated. Right. So you can't pick your field. The fields that are available are listed, and you can pick from that list, which are hundreds of different things to do. But that's up to you. If you find it working on human factors, being of interest to you, you can look up anything you want to and pick whatever is needed. We don't train people in professions that are not needed, like salespeople. You can get specifications of a product and the durability, whatever you want to know, is available. But you don't need a salesman. How much mental capacity on earth today is wasted oh, in my. irrelevant uh, professions or never even come to fruition yes. because of no education or for many well, other reasons. if you took a person from this culture and put them in the future, they'd say, I don't understand this. I don't understand it at all. And that's true. Like I say, if you took your grandmother to Miami Beach and she saw the girls walking around in bikinis, she might say, they've gone too far because of her background. But you understand, it's her background. Not that she's stupid. Her background. Now, most of those backgrounds will be eliminated in the future by education out of it. Right. Not all. And that's what the trends show already. The yes. trends are already showing these things. If you can't make the adjustment, other nations will pass you by. But they are still teaching so many professions that are just you know, pushing money around. Salespeople, insurance people, advertising. <laughs> bankers, lawyers, there's so many things that people learn that just take advantage of one another. They don't really contribute very much. They're parasites in this system. Right. I just had a visual of when I was in the military, we used to have to sweep dust in the parking lots all the time. And my, my thing, it's just ridiculous. That was one of our things. All I was doing was pushing dirt from one place to another. Instead of the, the earth is covered in dirt. So what is what am I doing here? And that's like, I liken that to, sorry, Jeff. I liken that to the money people. Yeah. They're just pushing it in different yeah. areas. That's really all it is. Sean, instead of a Pentagon, you have a, a lot of people that are trained in bridging the difference between nations. The Pentagon would serve as an organization, as an intermediate organization, to bridge the difference between cultures. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of soldiers on the planet. If they were not, if they were retrained from being soldiers into being scientists, engineers, mathematicians, all these things, medical people, uh, sure. how, how much would all of our standard everyone. of living be up, be higher Depends right on now? how many sick people. Just by that alone. Yeah. Yeah, just by that you alone. get people who get their kicks out of helping one another and learning things and doing something constructive.
instead of getting your kicks out of I don't think that's somebody. enough. Oh, okay. I thought you meant it. There were some people. I think everybody, in right, a sense, that's what I'm that, saying. Yeah. That's Sean, what do you feel there was any question I didn't answer? No, no. Uh, I was just trying to answer some questions from the community and uh, trying to right. get you to respond to their questions because uh, I think they value that a lot from you. And that's really nice that you're able to do that and to come on the show, obviously. <laughs> Is there anything else? Um, I got one more thing. Um, it's probably more for Joel and Roxanne, and it has to do okay. with their documentary and uh, updates on that. How's it going? You guys raised the money for it. Uh, what documentary? <laughs> yeah, Joel's uh, entire life right now, right? You're, you're, I mean, all, all the time, all day, every day working on that thing, and also you, right? And yeah. on top of all the Venus Project management and that type of stuff. Well, so. we both do all that management. Oh, okay, well, you know, yeah. We split that job, too, because yeah. it's just too much for two people. Well, you, you often have, like, ten on. jobs at the same time. It's really, it's yeah. amazing. But the documentary's coming along well. Okay. Yeah. Mm. We, we're getting a lot of people, uh, we're getting interviews from people, and Joel's been running and around the country. And this was something that we put in, and we had in the original plans, but because we did reach those, uh, the degree of the stretch goal, we decided to do it. And spend the money on getting these interviews, and they're very. We think they'll really enrich the whole, uh, right. you know, the whole film. Oh, absolutely. The, the interviews are something we thought of afterwards, yeah. and you have a question. We, we did reach that goal, and um, so Joel's been running around the country getting the interviews, and we're we're really having them describe the conditions of society today. Right, and, and then, then we'll reinforcing the a lot of the clips he already has too within the film too that. We think it give it a lot, lot, more, one, lot more weight. Yes, one person is, a, is an environmental specialist and how we can transition over to um, how it's totally possible and he explains and gives hard data of how you could convert the whole United States in 20 years to um, renewable resources, no yeah. fossil fuel burning. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Most That's people don't even know what the problems are today. <laughs> they don't even know what questions to ask. Yeah. But in the future they will. They'll be shown how our system works. Children will be taken on tours through every industry so they see how things are made and they understand where it comes from. Yeah. And they understand different production methods. They understand the meaning of automation. They start. They don't argue about what will problems. people do. I imagine how people go about, well, what do I want to do with my life? And they have their heroes. They have their sports heroes. They have their superheroes. Their comic book heroes. Their father want, or mother wants to push them in a certain direction. So the decision they make with their their life, their future, and their profession is based on uh, environments. Yeah. And in the future, I imagine a child, a relatively young child, who at least has access to information, says, "I want to become an astronaut." And the computer displays the entire path of becoming an astronaut. And that child has much more information almost immediately than uh, our, our current people today have over a 20 year period. So I think that that's going to be an awesome uh, advantage in the future too. And they probably wouldn't be aspiring to just one thing. Ah, that too. Because being an astronaut le means learning about many, many different things. Right, and it can branch off very easily into yeah. many other aspects because that's a pretty broad, broad field also. When they say what will motivate people if they have access to things, just say the end of war, poverty, starvation in the world, arguments between husband and wife, all that will disappear. Fist fights will disappear. The common things that we've been conditioned to want to watch, prize fights, will disappear because it harms the brain of people, not because Fresco doesn't like fights. Mm -hmm. But there's really, there's really nothing, no time where we reach a plateau where there's no other inquiry. Things will always be changing and you know when it's like when you get TV then people start thinking of three-dimensional TV or when you get cameras that are computers that are faster then they get faster and smaller and more efficient and don't we haven't, even, up, we haven't even finished know? exploring Earth yet. We're, we're far from that even you know we haven't been to the depths of the ocean we haven't really you know explored all aspects of Earth. And that's not even including later on after, you know, much in the future where we're dealing with space. That's nearly limitless exploration and endeavors. So. And if they ask more questions, you can write them down. Will do, yeah. Remember, the Venus Project is a very different system. That's why you can't use comparisons with today's 
system. That's true. That's all the re reference that people have at this point, though. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why when we stress education, it gives a person more tools and more capabilities to understand more things in the abstract. That's why semantics doesn't mean anything in a monetary system, because it doesn't change the system. You can't exceed the system with language. You can only exceed the system with events, recommended procedures that are better. You can't exceed the system by telling people to be good, be kind, be considerate. You have to take away the conditions that makes it necessary for you to be kind. And to be kind, you design highways that aren't slippery, where no accidents or less accidents occur in the future. Everybody becomes an innovator, a creator. 